Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on February 8th, 9th, 8th? 8th, 8th 2023. Uh, we haven't done this for a while because we've been out of town and things, but uh, happy to be here. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we're going to do what we have uh, not done for a while, and that is actually do our daily lectionary reading and talk about it and see what the Lord might have for us today. So let me, uh, we do actually have a lot of reading today, so I'm going to go ahead and open this in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this day and this time that we have to be in your word. I pray, Lord, that we would be continually transformed by it, that we would be remade, renewed into the person, uh, the image of your son, Jesus Christ. Uh, we are grateful, Lord, that you uh, love us and provide for us and forgive us when we fall short. And we are grateful for your word. And so uh, be with us today. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to start today with Psalm 89, verses 1 through 18. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David, I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord, a God feared in the counsel of the holy ones, great and awesome above all that are around him? O Lord God of hosts, who is as mighty as you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you, you rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. You crushed Rahab like a carcass. You scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world and all that is in it, you have founded them. The north and the south, you created them. Tabor and Hermon, joyously praise your name. You have a mighty arm, strong as your hand, high your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Happy are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. They exult in your name all day long and extol your righteousness, for you are the glory of their strength. By your favor, our horn is exalted, for our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Our prophetic word today comes from Isaiah chapter 59. See, the Lord's hand is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. Rather, your iniquities have been barriers between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue mutters wickedness. No one brings suit justly, no one goes to law honestly. They rely on empty pleas. They speak lies, conceiving mischief and begetting iniquity. They hatch adder's eggs and weave the spider's web. Whoever eats their eggs dies, and the crushed egg hatches out a viper. Their webs cannot serve as clothing. They cannot cover themselves with what they make. Their works are works of iniquity and deeds of violence are in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they rush to shed innocent blood. 
Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Desolation and destruction are in their highways. The way of peace they do not know, and there is no justice in their paths. Their roads they have made crooked. No one who walks in them knows peace. Therefore, justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We wait for light, and lo, there is darkness, and for brightness, but we walk in gloom. We grope like the blind along a wall, groping like those who have no eyes. We stumble at noon as in the twilight, among the vigorous as though we were dead. We all growl like bears, like doves we moan mournfully. We wait for justice, but there is none, for salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions before you are many, and our sins testify against us. Our transgressions indeed are with us, and we know our iniquities, transgressing and denying the Lord, and turning away from following our God, taking, talking oppression and revolt, conceiving lying words and uttering them from the heart. Justice is turned back, and righteousness stands at a distance, for truth stumbles in the public square, and uprightness cannot enter. Truth is lacking, and whoever turns from evil is despoiled. The Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one, and was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So he, his own arm, brought him victory, and his righteousness upheld him. He put on righteousness like a breastplate, and a helmet of salvation on his head. And he put garments of vengeance for clothing, and wrapped himself in fury as in a mantle. According to their deeds, so will he repay, wrath to his adversaries, requital to his enemies. To the coastlands he will render requital. To those in the west shall fear the name of the Lord, and those in the east his glory. For he will come like a pent-up stream that the wind of the Lord drives on. And he will come to Zion as Redeemer, to those in Jacob who turn from transgression, says the Lord. And as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon you, and my words that I have put in your mouth, shall not depart out of your mouth, or out of the mouths of your children, or out of the mouths of your children's children, says the Lord, from now on and forever. And from the New Testament, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15 through chapter 2, verse 13. You are aware that all who are in Asia have turned away from me, including Phygelus and Hermogenes. May the Lord grant mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. When he arrived in Rome, he eagerly searched for me and found me. May the Lord grant that he will, have, that he will find mercy from the Lord on that day. And you know very well how much service he rendered in Ephesus. You then, my child, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me through many witnesses in trust to faithful people who will be able to teach others as well. Share in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving in the army gets entangled in everyday affairs. The soldier's aim is to please the enlisting officer. And in the case of an athlete, no one is crowned without competing according to the rules. It is the farmer who does the work who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in all things. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, if, if we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. And our gospel text today comes from Mark chapter 10, verses 1 through 16. Jesus left that place and went to the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan. And crowds again gathered around him, and, as was his custom, he again taught them. Some Pharisees came, and to test him they asked, 
Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Jesus answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house with the disciples, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. And back to our Psalms, Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And our final psalm today is Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle. He put the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all humankind. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth, he who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory, and by its great might it cannot save. Truly, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our souls wait, our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Well, these are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Thanks be to God. Yeah, that was a lot of reading today. That was you a lot. lot. <laughs> I, was like, I need some water or something. Right. Um, so I think I was thinking about Psalm 89, the first one that we read that talked about just the, uh, the justice and the mercy that um, God is doing, you know, the whole, um, you know, his steadfast love, justice of the righteous, uh, justice of the foundation of your throne, uh, steadfast love and faithfulness go before you, all these descriptions of what God does. And then we switch to that Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 59. And if that was not a, uh, 
indictment against what was going on. Right. <laughs> right. Like, oh my gosh, who, who does that? They, they hatch adder's eggs and weave the spider's web. Whoever eats their eggs dies and the crushed egg hatches out of viper. Their um, feet run to evil. Their feet run to evil. Um, there's just such a huge contrast regularly between who God is, what God requires, and then often how humans respond. And that this passage from Isaiah was being written, um, you know, it's being, it's being spoken to the people of Israel. Obviously, Isaiah does talk about other nations and other tribes that also commit injustice and things of that nature. Um, but the fact that, uh, that this, you know, I'm sorry, I'm kind of like stumbling over some words know, because it's, it's just like, how, how do you say I... it better than what Isaiah said? It's just <laughs> this, are not these similar things going on today? Have they not really always gone on? Right. Um, and maybe uh, some things are maybe more um, visible to us because we're trying to pay closer attention or maybe it just seems to be uh, in our you know, neck of the woods or our community more recently. I don't, I don't know, but just being aware of um, just the injustice that goes on and just the, the, the deceitfulness of people and how even verses um, 9 through 15 where it's talking about people, people want uh, light, but mm -hmm. all there is is darkness, and they they grope along the blind, like uh, along the wall. Just all these images that are just so poignant about the depravity of humanity mm -hmm. and our incapacity to do justice, and then how God is going to come and and take care of that. Um, yeah. I don't even really know what to say other than you know the Lord saw it and it displeased Him that there was no justice. You know, clearly we read the Psalms, but, you know, God is justice. Right. God does these things, and that's why when people don't do it, he gets upset. Right. Well, and as you were, you know, we were reading these first Psalms, which of course, you know, the Psalm 147 is a, is a regular that we hear every week. Um, but as you were reading the Psalm 89, and it's the steadfast love, and forever, and faithfulness, and, um, great and awesome and God of hosts, all of this, I thought, okay, you know, it's all very uplifting. Right. And then you started reading <laughs> and then you asked, I was like, okay, yeah, just a little, a uh, little uncomfortable. There, um, you know, yeah, such a contrast, but yet, you know, right there, the, the Lord's hand is not too short to save. His right. ear is not too dull to hear. And, they're both reality. Mm -hmm. the The reality is that yes, we as humans, all of this, you know, that, that we are being condemned for here, and that 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 condemnation and and displeasing to God. But yet, His steadfast love mm -hmm. is consistent mm -hmm. and is constant. And yes, there will be there will be responses for these actions. Justice will be brought. Right. Um, he will do all of those things, but he is um, he is still more powerful than that. It is still right. his, you know, so. But. So you get to that last couple of verses of Isaiah 59 and, you know, starting verse 20, and he will come to Zion as redeemer mm -hmm. to those in Jacob who turn from transgression, says the Lord. And so this, this whole idea that, you know, he will come to Zion. And it's like, well, right. ultimately, who did come? Well, Jesus, Jesus. came. Uh, and then even that covenant language that's repeated there in verse 21. Um, my covenant I give to them. My spirit is upon you. My words that I've put in your mouth, they shall not depart from your mouth or the mouths of your children or the mouths of the children's children. children. And so it gets back to those um, psalm passages about his steadfast love, right. his, his righteousness enduring forever. Um, that he needs to be the one to come and redeem it because we we can't, we can't 
do. Right, and it's his action. It's him coming to us. It's right. his invitation right. to right. us. Right. Um, um, yeah, and so if you jump over to that Timothy passage again, I think uh, here is Paul writing to Timothy. Paul is obviously in, in chains, in prison, um, right. but, but it's, it's words of encouragement. Right. And it's like, well, wait, who, who does that? Who, you know, you're in prison. Shouldn't you right. be all, you know, woe downcast and woe is me and like run for it, Timothy. Like, you know, <laughs> right. save yourself. You know, this is terrible. But it's all about, uh, you know, he, he, he names these people that are, um, you know, some that have turned away, but others that uh, have continued to serve. And right. so there is that tension that still exists within people right some you know it's like whoa I, I don't want to go where Paul has gone right uh, but others continue to engage and, and are blessed from that um, but but uh, but what Paul's words to Timothy they're they're pretty tough words um, you know share share in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus right I don't know how it gets any more plain than that that if you are to be a believer in Christ uh, you 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 take your marching orders. You get right. them and you do them, and that's going to result in sharing in suffering. Right. Um, I think sometimes that is a concept that is not regularly understood, maybe by maybe a lot of Western Christians, right. um, where you know everyone knows that we're going to have problems. Everyone knows that there's going to be challenges, but it's almost like. If, if I'm a Christian, I shouldn't expect to experience those things. It should just right. be one continual uplifting. God will deal with all of that, right. and I don't have to. Right, and right. That's, um, yeah, I just don't think that's accurate, I think. Right. I think you're, um, you're going to get it. Well, and then even Paul has this recognition of um, this power, you know, uh, I may be chained, but the Word of God is not chained. Mm. And so, um, you know, when we start talking about the gospel, even in suffering, even in those tough times, difficult times, um, the gospel and the hope in the gospel is above that. And um, it stands and it doesn't change. Mm -hmm. um, it is, um, yeah, it's, it's there ever before us. Right. And, um, and so in that, then he goes on to this, you know, if you've died with him, you'll also live with him. Right. And so that's, you know, that's encouraging. Yeah. And that, that last line, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he right. cannot deny himself. And, uh, you know, I, I know that there's still things in my life that have, you know, problematic or whatever they might be, uh, that um, my my working out of my own faith has not been, you know, perfect. There are still right. still troughs of, of sin that I that I uh, fall into from time to time, and or regularly, as the case may be. Right? You know, what are you going to say? But uh, but Christ remains faithful, and it goes back again to all those songs that we read. Um, right. So um, so the character of God continues, you know, his faithfulness in the midst of our unfaithfulness, um, his continual calling for righteousness, even though uh, we'll experience some suffering in the midst of that. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do you jump uh, Mark 10 back into this? It's, uh, uh, I, I just, you know, again, I think the, 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 contrasting antagonists there, the Pharisees, and they're coming and they're looking for some way to uh, discredit the teachings of Christ or whatever it might right. happen to be. Um, and, uh, you know, it seems pretty pretty straightforward. You know, even, even the question when he asked, when Jesus asks them, well, what did Moses command? And it says, well, Moses allowed for this to happen. Um, so it wasn't even like Moses commanded this, like Moses allowed this. There's even a recognition right. that there's something off there a little bit. And Jesus right. is like, well, yeah, because y'all hard as a heart. You know, yeah. it's just, uh, uh, but you know, my understanding, even of the divorce laws uh, in the Old Testament, uh, they were meant to protect the vulnerable, which would right. frequently be the woman. Right. Um, 
where they could not just be uh, cast aside. There had to be a legal status for right. them so that they would be protected in that community. And so um, while, while divorce is, is um, unfortunately sometimes, uh, you know, maybe even sometimes needs to happen. I just, I hate to even right. say that, but it's, it's something right. where it was never God's intention. It was right. always about, um, you know, one man, one woman married, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Some concept right. in there of the one fleshness of those two becoming one um, is meant to be so much more than the world mm, gives credit for. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think we can look at this too as you look at um, as you look at as we look at the Psalms and this and this power and this um, the presence of God. You know, we so many of us are married. You know, that's just everyday life. Right. God is there in the everyday life, right. and um, I think that that um, is important to recognize. Mm -hmm. He is in the everyday. He is in the mundane. He is a part of that, and He has a part and a power in that. And just that recognition um, there, I think, is um, that's important to recognize. Right. In the very next section, you know, verses thirteen through sixteen, He starts talking about children. And ordinarily, you know, man and woman get married, they have Our kids. Children, and, right. uh, and I think even why maybe Mark put these two stories together, or these two teachings together, is, uh, you know, how much does God really truly care for the family? How much does he care? Um, because we know that divorce is, is very hurtful, uh, not just to the, the man and the woman getting divorced, but to but their to children, the children, and not right. even just only to their children, to their extended families. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the idea of a broken covenant um, damages the community. And, right. and again, uh, God is there. Mm -hmm. God can use even really difficult things. God can use even the pain that comes from a divorce and the, the brokenness in families to, uh, for, for his purposes. And hopefully right. people will you know, repent of sinful behavior. People will turn back to the Lord and people will, will seek him. But even that concept of unless you receive the kingdom as a little child, you'll never enter it. And, um, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I thought that, well, I want to, I want to grow up, you know, I want to start doing adult things, you know, that just looked like it was going to be better. Um, but how, how much of our own childhood is spent, uh, in, in learning and in trust, uh, and in submission, um, uh, in humility even, and just, right. you know, recognizing that, uh, you know, as children, they, they have very little power. Right. They have no authority. They have, uh, they are dependent upon others. And I think, I think that's what Jesus is kind of addressing. It's like, you know, when you come to me, come to me like a little child, uh, trusting, needing, uh, dependent, um, but also joyful and right. celebratory and, and, and in some ways carefree, you know, think back right. to when you were a kid and right. you got to go out and play and do all these things. You didn't have to worry about stuff. You know, your parents were taking care of all the things and largely carefree, or at least I, I know that's not true of every right. child. Right, every child or every uh, childhood, but even the, the idea of this, just this love, just love. I mean, yeah. like children love so much better than we do as right. adults. You know, I, I'll be honest. There are nights at the end of the night. You know, we're doing bedtime and putting the kids to bed, and, um, you know, it's just, it's been a day, and it's you know, I've just screwed everything up. You know, and, and putting them to bed, and and I have one of mine in particular. Um, I don't know. I think he just senses sometimes that I need to hear it, but he is just like. I love you. You're the best mom ever. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, did you just spend the same afternoon in the house that I did? Because I was not mm -hmm. killing it today. <laughs> and so, but it's just, they have this love that they don't, they don't hold that grudge. Right. They don't, um, right. they don't hold those cards, but you know, it's just, it is just open and it is offered freely and forgiveness is just thrown out there and there is no um it's just they just love so much better than we do um, i think you're right and so 
it's like they didn't even really have to practice it they just kind of do it right you know you get older and you get kind of jaded and defensive and trying to justify right. yourself all the time and holding grudges I think that's probably a Right. Really, a huge adult problem. You know, we, we like to hold grudges, right? You know, somebody's wronged us. Well, by golly, I'm gonna. Mm. Right. But but you're right. Kids well, are a lot better with that. Right. And sometimes sometimes it's not. I think as adults, you know, it's so important that we are right. Mm. And sometimes you don't have to be right. You have to be kind. Mm. And those don't always go hand in hand. Yeah. So they they get that much. They get that much better than we do. They get it, and they live it much better than we do. So, how much easier it would be if we can then, like children, recognize that we're not always going to be right and be able to repent of that more quickly, and forgive one another more easily. Mm. They get well, it. Well, they get it. Um, yeah, and so you know, you jump back. You jump back to Psalm thirty-three. Is you know, re rejoice in the Lord, praise the Lord, sing to Him a new song. Uh, you know, He created all things. He commands all things. He sees all of humanity from heaven. Um, all of the ways that we try to save ourselves are are worthless compared to the power of the Lord. Um, yeah, let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in You. Well. Uh, you got anything else to add? Anything? Yeah. Yeah, Isaiah 59. Let's just read more Isaiah 59, right? <laughs> <laughs> that but, is tough. Yeah. So, yeah. When, you're, when you're feeling it, go back to the Psalms. I think that's I, that's what it boils down to. These at least. Some of the Psalms are tough. Right? <laughs> well, but even some of the tough but ones. But that's kind of the whole of point. The even ones. some of the tough ones. Um, yeah. Because God knows that we experience really tough things. Right. But but coming back around, like just ending in praise. I think beginning and ending in praise, even if there's some misery in the middle. Hmm. Right. Wow. Well, I guess that's about it. That was a lot of reading so, today. Good stuff. That was a lot of reading. Well, I, I, have missed, uh, I have missed doing midweek connection with you, Natalie. Um, and uh, look forward to continuing to do so. So, well, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, we got any announcements to make or anything? Uh, you know, uh, church on Sunday morning. Right, two opportunities to worship, nine and 11.15, 15. Sunday school in the middle at 10.15. Um, right. This week is the normal. We'll do this next have, week and yeah. you know, we'll talk about, we do have a family game night coming up. We can talk about that, but we'll talk yeah. about that we'll next week. We'll talk about week. that next week, sounds good. So, yeah. Well, why don't you go ahead and close us in prayer? I'd be happy to. I am going to start with uh, the last thing we read, though. Okay. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in Him because we trust in His holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Gracious and loving Father, um, I pray that our soul waits for you that we feel your presence even in the difficult times and we recognize that your steadfast love is ever before us and that we come to you as little children trusting and loving humble and obedient be with us father just um, encourage us wrap us in your arms Help us to feel your love for us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. We look forward to, uh, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, please don't hesitate to call the church. We'd be happy to listen to you and to pray with you. But thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Bye-bye.